Yo, 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 Zane here. The New Year is around the corner, and with the New Year's, as everybody knows, we got some New Year's resolutions on deck. <laughs> the New Year is the time everybody is trying to make a change. When the year on the calendar changes, a lot of people want to make adjustments in themselves. They want to make improvements. And if you're here, congratulations, because you're already showing me and yourself some initiative that you want to become a better person. So that's awesome. I think one of the most overlooked parts and arguably the only good part of the fact that we're making resolutions is that we're trying to be better. And I think that's important. I think a lot of people don't understand the value in that. If you are one that are making resolutions, whether or not you've been able to follow through on them, it's awesome that you're trying because a resolution that is never made is a resolution that will definitely never come true. If you made one for yourself at all, then congrats. Congratulations. That's, that's a great start. If I'm keeping it a buck with you, if I'm keeping it a Milwaukee buck with you, there's one thing we get right about New Year's resolutions, and that is that that we want to be better. It is just the general idea that we're making a resolution. We are trying to make an improvement in ourselves. Whether it comes from the right place, whether we have the right intentions behind it, whether we are making the mistakes I'm about to explain to y'all, that's a different story. I'm no guru, but I definitely have done enough reflection that I feel comfortable telling you guys what's worked for me and how I've actually made legitimate changes, which a lot of times don't come from New Year's resolutions. The first huge mistake that people tend to make, they make it too broad. D nice. Is there a D nice? If one of y'all says some silly ass name, this whole class is gonna feel my wrath. Now, D nice. Do you mean Denise? Oh, no. Bitch! So let's say your resolution is I want to go to the gym oh, in the new year. That's your new year's resolution. I'm gonna start going to the gym. January 1st, 2022 rolls around. What does that look like? By just saying, I'm gonna go to the gym, you're not giving yourself specific guidelines that you're going to follow that will decide if you achieve this resolution or not. When we make these super broad resolutions, I believe we are just being quiet contributors to the people making too many excuses for themselves fun. And what I mean by that, By making a resolution too broad, I believe we subconsciously know we're setting ourselves up for failure. We know inside we have not really envisioned what the struggle is going to be like with going to the gym. Another cool idea that I learned from Lewis Howe's podcast, The School of Greatness, again, super suggested. One of the best podcasts, life-changing episode. It's great stuff. There was an author of a book, and she was a great speaker when I listened to her. She said that people have this habit of when they manifest, they think about all the great things that will come from doing what it is that they want to do. Here's where everybody goes wrong. You dream about the end, you make this gorgeous collage of all this stuff that has nothing to do with your current life. <laughs> the gap between where you are and where you want to go it seems insurmountable. Based on the research is when you only visualize the end game, Lewis, it's demotivating. Mm. At first, it's really fun to like have a bottle of wine and make your like collage. I'm gonna visualize, I'm gonna slap this up. There's my vision board, it's fabulous. Law of attraction, baby, come on. I'm gonna think about it, it's gonna come to me. The way to visualize properly is to visualize the bridge between where you are and where you need to go. Instead of envisioning when you'll have washboard abs or when you'll have a super thick toned butt, whatever it is that it is that you are imagining you will have once you start your new hobby, you have to envision what it's gonna be like when you go through the struggle between deciding to start it and getting to that desired result. When we only imagine the peak of the mountain, we're not at all preparing ourselves mentally for all the stuff that's gonna come between. When we make a really broad New Year's resolution, we're just imagining, I'm gonna start going to the gym and then I'm gonna be shredded. I'm gonna start learning Spanish and then I'm gonna be fluent. What we need to think of is all the time in between. What's it gonna to take to get there? On a daily basis, what are we gonna to have to do and sacrifice? Paparazzi's out to get me, bro, I promise, I promise. By not imagining the time between now we're setting our goal and now we're achieving our goal, we're not mentally preparing ourselves for the sacrifices that we'll have to make for the struggles we're gonna go through, the discipline we're gonna have to have. Make your goal more specific and actionable rather than I'm gonna read 20 books 
in 2022, it's I'm going to read 10 pages a day for the first month. And that way you're doing actionable things that you can either do or not do on a daily basis that will lead you to get to your goal and be a lot easier to handle than the entirety of like, I'm going to read 22 books or I'm going to start going to the gym. The second one, huge one is we set a new year's resolution for something that is out of our control let's say you want to be a youtuber let's say that your goal for 2022 is to start a youtube channel be successful with it and reach x amount of subscribers right let's say it's reached 500 subscribers in 2022 let's say the first video you post in 2022 hits gets on the trending page you hit a thousand subscribers in the first week that's awesome right isn't that the coolest thing ever you hit your goal already so what is gonna keep you going throughout the rest of the year the thing is when we set goals that are within our control completely that goal that is within your control generally you can set it so that you won't hit it on your very first try because why would you set a goal that you were going to hit immediately like i guess you could but that's more just like a task if you know you're going to achieve it it's just like something you're doing like breakfast I don't, I don't set it as a goal of myself to eat breakfast every day. But if that's something that you're not consistently able to do, then you could. When you set a goal that is totally within your control. That's a bar right there. Bars. And you achieve it, you have a even stronger sense of self-confidence, self-trust, right? Self-worth. You have now shown yourself, I can set a solid, well-intentioned goal and I can take the next step and actually achieve it. And to reinforce that sense of self-trust in you is so important towards reaching the rest of your goals and hitting your stride and staying in the zone and stuff like that. The third one, and this is arguably the most important, your resolution has no real intention behind it. I don't care for in high school, I love you. No, you I don't, you. Topper. You love the idea of me. You love being seen with me, but you don't love me. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the head off New Year's resolutions right here and right now. I got one question for you. If you really wanted to make a positive change in your life, why are you waiting any amount of time to start doing that? If you really wanted to make this change that you're waiting for the new year to make, why wouldn't you just start working on it now? Um. Well, it doesn't have to... That's a good question. I don't know. The issue with a lot of New Year's resolutions is that people don't put enough thought into them because if they did, they'd realize they didn't have any real intentions behind them. You have to look into yourself and think of what are the things that I'm insecure about and that ail me and that I truly want to adjust and change. And then you need to decide how am I going to go about achieving that? With New Year's resolutions, I believe that if your resolutions often fail, it's probably because you're like, oh, it's New Year's, like, New Year, new me. Let me do this thing that I've been putting off for years that I really should just stop trying to do because I'm not that passionate about it, but I say I am, but I haven't done the self-work to decide if I really am. I think we do too much kind of mental and emotional twiddling of the thumbs. In reality, we're not doing the deep work and looking into ourselves and saying, what is it that's really hurting me? Is it, I wanna to go to more parties and talk to more people? Or is it, I wanna reach out to my family and fix my familial relationships? You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm, look, I'm sorry. Final summary, cliff notes of it all. We need to make resolutions that are more precise. We need to make resolutions that are within our control. And finally, we need to make resolutions that have good, strong intentions that we really, really do wanna work on and change. One final thing I'll say, don't be afraid to start small. If you wanna be a reader this year and your resolution is gonna be 10 minutes a day of reading, so be it. And as the year goes on, remember, you can change it, you can up it, you can adjust. Don't be afraid to start small, keep it micro, focus on making the small decisions that are gonna make your life a whole lot better as a whole. Cause trust me, they have a ripple effect. I appreciate you watching. Comment below what your new year's resolution is gonna be because I would love to know. If you're still here, watch the whole video and drop a subscribe because I got tons of other great content coming out. And I'm definitely gonna make a resolution about posting a certain number of videos next year because I wanna make sure I stay consistent. I'm creating a lot of dope content for y'all. Follow me on Instagram, I'll drop it on the screen. And I'm gonna see y'all in the next video. Peace.